Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today, we have a lot of seedlings. Um, so if you didn't know, me and Lauren recently um, collaborated on a hybrid. It was my Anthurium Hoffmanii X as the mother and it was her red crystal as the father, the pollen parent. We had tons and tons of babies. We have since then sold a lot of them. Um, they are in the world now but there's still so many left. We decided that we were gonna hold off on selling the rest of the seedlings and we would kind of grow out what we had to sell them at a higher price point once they're a little bit more mature and we can see more of the features. Um, and so I thought that it would be a good opportunity to kind of show you the variation in a seed batch and just show you that, you know, there are stronger seedlings, there are weaker seedlings. I wanna show you like how different it can be because everything was potted at the same time. It's in the same substrate, it's in the same environment. So um, yeah, today we are going to be repotting some of the larger seedlings and I am going to be throwing out a lot of the runts. So I know I have read that a lot of people have, maybe not a lot, but there's, there's a, percentage of people who are against throwing out runts and they just think like oh well it's such a waste like why don't you just give it away to someone who like can't afford the seedling or whatever so my issue is that runts they're just they're like problem children they don't grow very well it's frustrating to grow i know that you know it's not my decision to say like oh nobody is going to want to have that experience and i'm just going to do you a favor to me, it's more so um, the, not that I'm skeptical. Okay, fine, I'm skeptical. I worry that I give a bunch of runts to someone or I give a runt to someone and then they sell it to someone else, not disclosing that it's a runt. And then this person gets this seed and they're like struggling with it. They don't know what's wrong with it. And they think it's them and they're seeing everybody else who has a seed from that seed batch and they're just like, what am I doing wrong? So I think I've just become sort of jaded by how opportunistic the plant world has become in terms of making money. And it's just my personal decision. I just don't, I just don't want to sell any runts and I would rather just chuck them away. And um, it's not just me who does it. It's a very, very common practice. Some of your favorite sellers throw out runs as well, and it's just a thing. So if you have a problem with that, maybe you don't want to watch, <laughs> but I'm going to show you what I've got. As you can see, we have a good variety of seedlings here. So I have separated the larger ones, but out of all of these, I would say maybe this one and this one is probably the largest. And I hope everything's focusing. I can't really see the viewfinder. So compare something like this to a seedling that was potted at the same time. Let's see down here, or maybe this guy. Like, look at how teeny tiny it is. You basically can't even see any traits on it yet. And so these are the ones that I would love to weed out. I don't want to have to worry about trying to grow them out. I don't want, again, I don't want to sell them. I'm just going to start pulling out some of the smaller ones. So this guy is gonna go. This one is pretty small too. This guy is teeny tiny. This one, this one. These two, oh my gosh, there's fungus nuts in here. This one, this one. Also, I not I don't only go by size, but like if I see some leaves that are just like looking really like gross and nasty, kind of like that, like yellowy and stuff, I tend to throw these out as well. But I also want to make sure it's not variegation. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is not variegated. So I'm gonna tuck tuck. I'm gonna chuck that one out. There's a few that are like potted together. I'm probably gonna chuck these out too. This one. There's a lot of like fungus in here. Mold. Harmless mold. Um, who else? This one's kind of cockapoo-poo. I'm gonna chuck out. I'm probably not gonna chuck out this one, but I'll chuck out the tinier ones in there. 
Uh, this one's kind of small, but it's showing some silver. So that one might make the cut. This is just still a lot of seedlings. Do you guys see any that you would chuck out? This one's pretty tiny as well. This one's small. I want to say I've chucked out almost half of them because I want to still try and squeeze these into this dome if possible, but I'm going to be upsizing the pots, I think, in a few weeks. I'm not going to be touching these just yet. I want to grow it out a little bit more, see who's really on the small side, and then we will continue to um, chuck out runts. But I just wanted to show you the variation with these seeds. And then I'm gonna show you some of the bigger ones. Oh my God, there's fungus gnats in here. I also have some of these in the combined pot. So lots of runts in here, as you can see, they're just like, they look like little weeds. So I'm gonna take out some of the bigger ones and repot these, whoa. And I'm going to, again, do the same thing with some of the bigger ones in here. But look at it in comparison to some of the stronger ones in the batch. So comparing this to that. So imagine you and your friends, you buy seedlings. Um, you all get them at kind of the same size, like really tiny like this. But after the same amount of time, your friends is this much bigger and yours still looks like this. If you're not really familiar with seed variation or you just don't really know how it works, you would just kind of assume that it's something you're doing wrong. And I just don't like that. So um, yeah, anyway, these are the ones that I'm gonna be repotting today. Like I said, these are going back in the dome and uh, I'm gonna see who else is uh, a little bit quicker in growth and we I will repot those um, in a few weeks. This one's really, really cute. The, um, the silver variegation on this one. Okay, putting this one away. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Ooh. 10, 11, 12, 13 seedlings to repot, plus the ones that I'm weeding out of this. So not too many, but still quite a few. While we repot today, I was kind of, I asked for a topic to talk about, but nothing really came in that would take up a whole video. So I think I'm just gonna like go through some of the answers or suggestions that I got. And just so we have something to chat about while we're hanging out together. This one, this one actually could be its own video, but wow. It requires so much work going back to like old videos and stuff. And I'm just, too, I can't, <laughs> too much work. But it was plant care you no longer do. For example, do you still scrape? I bought that little tool because of you. I have kind of thought about this a little bit over like the last year. Like, sorry, I need to go pay my credit card before I forget. Okay, credit card is paid. Almost forgot to do it this month. Time is just flying by. I thought I did it, but that was December's payment. Okay. Um, oh yeah, so plant care that I used to do that I no longer do. Honestly, I'm kind of a creature of, of habit and um, I don't, I don't, not that I don't like to change things up a lot, but I kind of just like stick to what works for me. And like in the past, the things that I've done, like scraping, like layering my substrates, like it all had like a very specific reason. Now, I think looking back, the only thing that's really kind of changed year after year is the soil mix that I use and like my fertilizers and the things that I use to treat for pests and stuff, like those kind of change. Um, every year because I'm just constantly learning from other people getting suggestions from other people and so Yeah, I would say I think like in the beginning of my YouTube channel. I was Primarily using in terms of fertilizer. I think I was using Marfil 
I think I was even using like the Schultz fertilizer. I believe I was using CalMag already, but I can't think of like the main, the main fertilizer that I would use because I didn't start using TPS-1 until 2022, I think. I'm sure if I look back on my Amazon account, I'll see what it was, but yeah, I would say like my fertilizer has changed and my fertilizing regimen has changed. Like before I used to only fertilize like every few weeks and I wouldn't, I mean, I would still fertilize year round, but not as often. So whereas before I would have kind of like a dedicated fertilizing day, like in the month or every other month or whatever. Now I'm just fertilizing every week at a diluted amount for all of the plants that are pushing out growth. So that's something different that I am doing now that I didn't do before. I would say even like the whole sizing up pots thing, this is a fairly new practice that I've been kind of twiddling with and getting used to. I want to say that 90% of the transitions that I've made to larger pots went really well and are showing signs of much larger growth than they did before. I need another um, bowl or something. Oh, feeling a bit nauseous and dizzy today. My nausea came back a couple weeks ago, which sucks so bad. I'm already 22 weeks, more than halfway through my pregnancy and I'm still dealing with nausea. I'm like, when do I get a break? When? What was I saying? Oh yeah, so 90% of them have gone well. Um, and then there's that 10% where like I, you know, upsized the pot but didn't get the environmental things right. And it was like too little of light primarily. And then I dealt with some root rot. Um, because there was just way too much moisture in the substrate and not enough light. So uh, yeah, I'm still learning, but that's definitely something that I'm doing different now. I wish this substrate was dry. It'd be so much easier to repot these, but... Uh, the seedlings at the shop got watered not too long ago. What else do I do differently? Uh, I still scrape. I'm a scraper. I'm gonna be a scraper till the very end. Um, I just love doing it. Kind of a minor thing, but like before, I was just not very against it, but I really tended to not chop off leaves unless they yellowed off on its own. And now if it's like in the way or it's just ugly, and especially if it's in my living room, I chop it off. I just can't be bothered. I don't want to look at it. If I can't fit all my plants on a certain shelf, something's got to give. It's just much easier now for me to chop leaves off without feeling so tense about it, you know? So that's something I do different. I still do the parfait method. If you guys don't know what the parfait method is, I will link the video where I talked about it. It's just now that I have plants that I, for the most part, I understand and I have gotten rid of a lot of the really, really finicky plants that were giving me grief. I don't really find the need to use that method anymore, but you know, if it came to it, it's not like I wouldn't do it again if I needed to. So yeah, that's something that I guess has changed a bit. I'm not really doing that a whole lot anymore. Still doing the no drainage thing. Oh, I mean, before I grew pretty much every plant under the sun in no drainage, but now I'm putting my anthurium with drainage. I just feel, I just feel more comfortable doing that rather than doing no drainage just because I was, yeah, I'm still, I'm still learning the way of anthurium and it's, it's been a, it's been a journey. Not only am I trying to learn the way of anthurium, but I'm trying to learn the way of anthurium growing outside of a greenhouse, which has had its own challenges, but it's been pretty rewarding and it's been a very, very long process for sure, but I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't take it back or I wouldn't go back to growing anthurium in a greenhouse. Okay. I think that's not really all I can think about. And that's why I haven't really done like a whole video on it. I mean, not to mention the laziness part, but I, I don't feel like not like things have changed that much in terms of my care 
and the things that I do with my plants. What plants, sorry, I'm like rolling out of the frame here. Um, which plants thrive on a pole? I'm getting mixed messages about my elbow and tie. So in terms of Monstera and Philodendron, I'm just gonna tell you, get them on a pole. The only exception that I would say is the Monstera tie. Uh, constellation because it's um, naturally a large form plant it really doesn't need a pole to size up like that sucker is it's it's large form so all of the petioles you'll notice are stacked right on top of each other and so it kind of in a way it's not self-heading but it kind of acts self-heading in that it like can support itself essentially um, or it'll kind of like maybe lean to a certain angle, but then it'll find its way up. And so with the Tycon, you really don't need a pole for it to size up if that's your goal. It's just if you give it the right conditions, give it time, give it the right pot size fertilizer, um, you'll see growth on it. Whereas the Monstera Elbow is the small form Monstera. So I've seen people size up the Elbow without a pole, but if you want to see quicker size growth, quicker fenestrations, quicker pinations, I would recommend getting it on a pole. But in terms of, yeah, everything else, uh, if you wanna see size growth on your Monsteras and your Philodendron, I'm always gonna say to use a pole, even though it can be such a pain in the butt. I'm very pro pole. I will get things on a pole now if I really love it, but you know, I get why some people choose to not do it. It's just, it's a lot of work to maintain. And honestly, if you're not gonna maintain it, the benefit of it, it's not like you're not gonna see any benefit from it essentially. So you have to be willing to like, make sure that it's actually using it as support, whether it's rooted into it or it's just like kind of leaning on it or like grabbing onto it on the outside. I see many posts online where they'll stick a pole in it, but like it's nowhere near the stem and it's kind of just like hanging on by a string or something. I mean, at that point, you might as well just use like a wooden stake or like a bamboo stick. There's really no, oh no. There's really no point in using a pole. Oh, did I rip that root system off? Or did it just have a really tiny root system? Oh no, I ripped the roots off. Good, perfect. I don't even know if some of these are gonna do well in a bigger pot, but I'm gonna try it anyway. So that's just, that's my recommendation. Get it on a pole if you wanna see growth. This one has a little mushroom. Little cutie pie. Okay, all of those are out. Now let's start separating some of the bigger ones. I could probably honestly reuse this substrate because it's not very old and like there's like little to no root breakage besides what I just pulled out. Um, plants you used to hate but now you love. The first one that comes to mind is my Alocasia cuprea. I was, I don't know why, like I was just so creeped out by it and grossed out by it and I just didn't like it. But now it's like one of my favorite alocasias and I honestly can't even imagine my collection without it. So the cupria is one. I think I just like, I don't know, the ribs kind of scared me, it like freaked me out a little bit. These are actually all quite small. I might leave all of these in here for now and just kind of see what happens to them, but it's not really worth me potting those up and then I'm just gonna pull this guy out it's the biggest one can you guys even see I'm so far from you so yeah the Cupri is one I think I just like the it just looked a little bit too alien and it I don't know the it wasn't so much like the color it was just like the texture like the shininess kind of like reminded me of a bug like a beetle and then like the ribbing on it was just didn't look natural like it just looks looks like AI right but I don't know something clicked in me one day and I was just like it's actually kind of cool so that's definitely one that I changed my tune about um, another one is the Anthurium vicii when my friends didn't own one yet and they were all like pining for one I was just like why it's so ugly and gross looking and like 
again, alien-like, you know, in a creepy way. It kind of triggered the same feelings that I get like with trypophobia, like when I see holes and dots and stuff, it creeped me out. But then once my friends owned it and like the soup, the Anthurium VTI super narrow started floating around, I was like, fine, it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. I think it took seeing it in person for me to really appreciate it and um, get past the things that creeped me out about it. And now I'm just like, I love the VGI, the super narrow. The regular VGI doesn't really do anything for me. It's just not really anything to write home about, you know? I would say like my entire Hoya collection, if you guys watch this channel from the beginning, you know that I was very like anti-Hoya. I was like, I'm not gonna own a Hoya. I think they all look the same. There's nothing special about them. I really ragged on Hoyas. And then it took seeing one of those ancient dumpster Hoyas, if you guys are not familiar with that term that I use on this channel sometimes. It was coined by two of my plant friends, Jing and Alice. They referred to like the very reptilian, almost dead looking Hoyas as um, ancient dumpster Hoyas. So uh, yeah, that's just, that. that's where it started for me, the very like, yeah, the reptilian ones, the ones that looked crusty and gross and trashy, I loved them. I Well, I learned to love them. And so that's where it started. And then I started becoming more fascinated with like the really silvery Hoyas, um, especially if it's a silvery dumpster Hoya, like the, I can't remember what it's called, but I'll see if I can plug in a photo here if I can remember what it is. The venation on that one can get really, really, I don't know, like prominent and then it has like white splashes and it's just really cool. I don't know if I wanna do drainage holes for these seedlings because what I could do is cut holes in these and then just put it into another pot and that way I can like flush it out if I need to. But at the same time, I almost feel like they're so small right now that I kind of want to hold on to that moisture. So maybe, maybe when they get repotted in something bigger than this, I'll go with drainage holes. But for now, I think this is fine. And I'm almost even thinking I want to do LECA, like a tiny layer of LECA down at the bottom. Maybe? Yeah, those are the only things I can think about. Hoyas the Vichii and um, the Cupria. I think everything else I've kind of stuck to my guns about in terms of like, I didn't like it and never brought it home. I could be wrong, you guys. You can fact check me. I, I can't think of anything right now besides those. Trading etiquette. What to do if a trade goes bad? I feel like I'm not like the best person to answer this because I, I feel like I need like examples of a trade gone bad. I've only had like good experiences with trading. I guess one thing that could go wrong. So for example, I did a trade recently with someone um, from our Discord. I'll link me and Alice's Discord channel in the chat, or in the chat, in the description. And we did a Ripsalis trade. I got my Ripsalis Hilarii from her and um, she got a Paradoxa and I think it was, a paradoxa and maybe something else I can't remember and she I think it had like cold damage mine had cold damage when she received it and so it wasn't in the best shape but I was fully willing like if she had messaged me and told me that it had completely died um, before it could root or whatever I 100% would have immediately just sent her another cutting um, just because she fulfilled her end of the bargain. She sent me a very healthy plant, shipped it really well, no cold damage at all, no rot, nothing. Yeah, I just appreciated that, you know, she took so much time to, uh, to package it well. I think she had a heat pack in it. I'm pretty sure. I don't think I had a heat pack in mine, unless I did. I do remember getting a heat pack from my friend Jing, but I think that's when I sent a package to Fern my brain like why can't i remember anything so anyway yeah basically hers arrived with a little bit of damage she was able to rehab it and it's like rooted now and so that's a relief but if 
she hadn't been able to, I would have replaced it like without her even needing to ask or kind of hint at it, right? That's just like in my nature. I'm not gonna just be like, oh well, too bad. Um, but I think the way this trade could have gone wrong is if, yeah, she received the plant with cold damage or rot or whatever, and then it died fully, and I just was like radio silent or was just like, whatever, I don't care. I got my plant, you got yours, like it's out of my hands now. I think that could have been, you know, a bad trade, but I can't really think of any other circumstances where a trade would go bad. Another, I mean, another thing I could think of is like maybe someone sends their end and then the other person never sends theirs and they just like go silent like they just get ghosted that could that could be bad i don't know if i would if i was in the situation i don't know if i would like out them i mean i might <laughs> i might just because that's shady like that's shady business but it's but also it's not in my nature to like go public with things like when personal stuff happen within the plant community like i've been in some drama like behind the scenes but i'm i would say i'm pretty quiet about it i don't just like immediately go and tell everybody what's going on you know like i my friends obviously yeah but like if i was in a bad trade i don't know if i would say anything if it was someone personal but i think if it was like a shop or something like like maybe i did sponsored content for them and they never paid or something i might say something and be like don't work with them because they're not gonna they're not gonna pay you but i don't know like a personal trade i might not but also i feel like that sometimes i'm just like way too nice i'm going to be inoculating today with tps billions i'm just gonna sprinkle some on the roots because we want a nice healthy root system I mean, that would be that would be an interesting thing to talk about. Like, you know how I do the Am I the A-hole series? It'd be cool if people could submit their stories to me about um, bad trades, bad sales, or whatever. That might be fun to talk about. Could you talk about the other hobbies you've tried? <laughs> I would be happy to. The only ones that I can really think of... I mean, I don't know if you would consider this a hobby. I guess it's a hobby. Like, volleyball used to be a hobby, believe it or not. I played volleyball basically from elementary school up until high school. I was on varsity my sophomore year, so I did JV freshman year, and then I, I was on varsity sophomore year. I stopped playing junior year because I moved away, and uh, I left that whole life behind <laughs> and turned into like a delinquent when I moved to SAC. That was like my bad girl era where um, you know, my dad was living in our old city still when we moved to Sacramento. So he was still living in San Jose. My mom was still working in San Jose. And so she was commuting like a crazy amount of hours a day. So I was kind of like home alone a lot. And I had like way more freedom than I ever had my whole life because my dad was very, I'm going to use this word overbearing, but when i when i left home finally moved out a lot of bad things happened to me that all surrounded men and so i just i kind of understood what my dad was trying to protect me from and now i look back and i kind of appreciate it i kind of wish he went about it differently i think we would have had a much better relationship for sure but i get it now but anyway all that said he was gone he was only home like every other weekend so i was like I'm letting loose, I'm drinking, going out with friends, I'm partying, sneaking out, like I did everything. And so yeah, like volleyball was not something that I thought about, but I played club volleyball in high school. It's like where you join like a private team and you guys travel all around um, to play other club teams, very expensive. But I did that for a couple years. I dabbled in painting and drawing. I mean, now I would consider part of my job um, for Free Pancakes, a children's brand. That's my business, if you guys didn't know. I would consider illustration slash graphic design as my, I would say, primary job. Uh, so, but I, I don't know. I wouldn't really consider it a hobby, to be honest. Like, 
I do it out of necessity. There are times where like I can really zone out and um, like get into a piece of art and maybe I'll overlay some of the pieces that I've done in the past or maybe a piece I've done in the past where I was just so fixated on it. I had so much fun drawing it, but it's not something that I'm like seeking out. I don't really have days where I'm like, I wanna draw today and I'll just spend a whole day drawing. Um, I used to, when I got into painting, I would have days where I would just spend all day painting, but I don't know. Um, I mentioned this in my reasons why plant people love plants video, and I just like that plants are kind of the boss and I'm just doing whatever it needs, and I don't have to be the one that's like, figuring out what we're doing that day. I don't have to be super creative and use a lot of brain power in that aspect. I just kind of look around and see what needs to be done. And I really like that. Um, I think in a lot of ways in my life, I like to be in charge. I like to be the leader, which is why I've chosen to be self-employed for so long. But there are other aspects of my life where I'm like, just tell me what to do. And in this hobby, this is, that's just one thing that I love. I'm like, just tell me what to do. I don't have to think about it. So in a way, plants being your boss, it's kind of, I don't know, it's kind of great. I forgot to inoculate that one. Oh no. So yeah, painting, drawing, illustrating, whatever. If you want to consider that a hobby, uh, dabbled in that a bit. And then that's it. Honestly, I really wasn't a huge hobby person before before plants like I would I would honestly consider this my first real hobby because I have never loved anything the way that I love plants never loved volleyball the way I love plants never loved painting or illustrating the way I love plants so I guess that's my only answer I kind of wish I had another hobby at the same time as plants I don't know just because sometimes I get Sometimes I get bored. Sometimes I get bored of plants on it. Not, maybe not bored, but like, there are just times where I'm like, I don't really want to do anything to them right now. I don't really care a whole lot. Like I said in that video, the plant, people loving plants video. There are times where I'm so just like fixated on my plants. All I want to do is play with them and gawk at them and repot them and do fun things with them. And then there's other times where I'm just like, you can just take care of yourself. I just want to do something else. And so I kind of do wish sometimes I had like something else I love to do. Maybe something like outdoors so that I like get fresh air more often. But honestly, I just love being home. Oh, I don't know if you would consider this a hobby, but I really was into running a couple years ago, like 10... 10 years ago, I did a full marathon and it was really hard running 26.2 miles. That was like probably one of the hardest things I've ever done, but like training for it, actually doing it, it was so rewarding and it was such an incredible experience that I'll never forget. And I just, I don't know, I, I really felt good when I was running and when I was working out all the time, it gave me purpose, it gave me structure, I felt good, my mental health was good, but I just don't really like, I just don't really like working out now. <laughs> I don't want to go to the gym. I certainly don't want to go to the gym. I don't think, I don't think I'll ever step foot into a gym again in my life, but like, I kind of wish that I had that desire to like, go on walks more often, or I had that desire or urge to like, go for runs like I did before. I should just like turn into a lazy sack of crap, I feel. But anyway, that's my rant on that. I'd love to hear about random things you hate. I don't know why, <laughs> that's so funny. I could probably do a whole video on this, to be honest. Just like the most random things that I hate. I, yeah. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll save that for a whole repot and chat. Um, it would be interesting to hear your plans for plants plus Archie if you're comfortable sharing. I don't know if you mean like my plans for like maybe baby proofing or something. I honestly don't plan to do anything. I got rid of my Euphorbia trigona because I felt like that was, ac like that was a safety hazard because of its spikiness. It's, you know, it 
can be irritating on the skin. The sap, I mean. But in terms of like moving plants away so that he doesn't grab at them or touch them, I'm going into it the same way I did with Pudge. I had thought about moving all my plants when we got Pudge as a puppy because I didn't want him to get into it. I didn't want him to destroy it. But I was like, you know what? I want him to get used to it. Like I want him to know that they're there. I want them to kind of just become something that's in the house that he is just around all the time so he's not as interested in it. And so when, yeah, he was a puppy, he did tear up a few of my plants and obviously I don't love that. Did I inoculate this? I'm going to um, just inoc put some TPS in my water when I water these, just in case. For the plants that didn't get TPS, because I'm having I'm having a hard time focusing on talking and potting at the same time. Yeah, so with Pudge, he tore up a few plants, but it was, you know, we reprimanded him, we showed him that wasn't okay. And like, by the time he was like one, he just stopped caring about plants. Like he did not go near them at all. Um, anytime I'd bring a new plant home, I could literally just like put it right on the floor and he'd like sniff it and then walk away. He's like over it. Like my sister with her plants, she had them around too and um, yeah, not, it wasn't too much of an issue. There have been a few times where they got grabby with it, but she would just teach them that, you know, we don't touch those and then yeah, just kind of worked out on its own because I don't want to feel like I have to put away all my plants just so that they don't get destroyed. I would rather sacrifice the few that do get destroyed for that lesson so that I could teach him that like these things are around, we take care of them, we don't destroy them so that going forward it doesn't have to be an issue and I can just have plants freely around. Of course my only exception is going to be, like I said, any plants that like are a risk or danger to him. Um, so like any kind of succulent or whatever that if he did get into it and like broke a piece off and like ingested some, like I'm obviously taking those kinds of precautions but I don't really have anything now where he would get into it and like we would have you know, a lot of trouble. Sorry for my phone vibrating. Jupiter has been sick. Um, she's really not eating a lot. And yeah, we've been kind of worried. So my mom's like updating me on what's going on. Oh my God. I can't imagine life without Jupiter in it. She's 12 now. So she's like kind of getting up there. She's like been in pretty good health. I would be very, very not okay if something happened to her and like my mom is still not over the loss of our dog, our family dog Milo and that's why I gave her Jupiter as like a companion because they got along so well. Like my mom and Jupiter just always have had this really special bond and my mom's so patient with her and can just like pet her until oh my god she can go like so long i don't have that kind of patience so it just like kind of made sense for her to be with my mom and i'm just like god if this happens again it just seems like it's too soon even though milo passed in like was it 2018 or 2019 i don't know so yeah th those are my plans with archie and i do plan on introducing him to plant care really early in life I want to see if he's interested in it. Of course, I'm not going to force anything. Like, if he's into other things, I'm not going to be like, no, you have to be into plants. But obviously, I would love if we could share in this hobby and then I'll have someone to pass my plants down to when I am no longer here. Um, so I will shoot my shot. I will give it a try. But I know there's no guarantees. Um, and then in terms of, like, plant collecting plant care youtube and stuff i the plan is resume business as normal i have made this a point that i just don't want to sacrifice too much of who i was before he came into the picture and i've had so many people comment just like wonderful things saying how like plants actually made them a better mom and gave them that structure gave them that like sense of self and um, that some of their kids even love plants and stuff like that. So it's been very reassuring. I did have one 
<laughs> one person comment on my vlog and was like, that poor kid is gonna need is gonna need so much therapy because his coo his what did he say? What did she say? Wackadoodle mom won't give him his own room. <laughs> Cause I didn't want to no, let's let's actually read what it said. I don't want to put words in her mouth. Cause I was talking about on my vlog how like he's not like I said I was not gonna sacrifice this plant room. I was very adamant about it, not only for my own sake, but like this is my job now. And so I was like, I'm not giving up my plant room. And like kids don't even need that much space in the first two years. And we don't plan on retiring in this house. Like eventually we'd love to live in a bigger place where he does have his own room. Which he does, it's just my husband's desk is in the corner of it, but apparently that's not good enough. Um, he is gonna need some serious therapy knowing that he couldn't have a bedroom because his wackadoodle mom needed a room for plants, the poor kid. Let me tell you this, I didn't get a room until later in life, my own room until later in life, and even when I did, I still wanted to sleep with my parents. Even if he doesn't have his own dedicated room without Vince's office desk in it, for like a couple years, I'm pretty sure he's gonna be fine. I don't think that will traumatize him. I think he's going to be just perfectly okay. And there are plenty of families who like room share until they're way older. I just thought that was such a funny comment. That was like not, I anticipate like when I do things on this channel or even on my vlog channel say certain things, I can kind of sort of anticipate some of the backlash or some of the commentary that might come from it from com from people who watch this was not one of them i was not expecting a comment like that where like they were really insinuating that archie would be traumatized and have to go to therapy because he didn't have his own room people online are really 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 funny after a certain while you you just become immune to it sadly that shouldn't be the normal People who create content shouldn't just be um, numb to comments like that. They really shouldn't be, but it's just the reality. This one looks like it's gonna be really cute. Like you can see some of the red in the emergent leaf and it has like a really silvery emergent, like the venation on it is really bright and silvery. I only plan to keep like maybe two of the seeds from this batch or the two of the plants from this batch. So I'm gonna let these all grow out, including the ones I already have. I'm gonna let them grow out a bit and I'll keep the one that I like the most or keep the two that I like the most. Ow, my booty. Best TV series right now. Um, I don't know, but that's what I need to know. <laughs> So um, something that me and Vince watched recently that I really loved, I kind of wish I wasn't watching it dur during my first trimester because I was so nauseous and food averse, um, but that's The Bear. And it's essentially just, I, well, I don't want to give it too much away, but it's called The Bear. It's on Apple TV Plus and it's so good. It's chaotic, and it, but it's so good. It's, it's categorized as a comedy, but I don't, I don't see it as a comedy. It To me, it's more of like a drama. Ugh. I would say a drama, but it's a really good show. So if you're into like cooking and restaurants and things like that, like it's a really good show. I didn't think that I would be into it. Like when Vince wanted to start it and like I heard of the concept, I was just like, eh, whatever. But I was like in a chokehold by the end. So that was really good. Um, something else that we are watching, Monarch uh, the Legend, I think it's called Monarch the Legend of Monsters or something like that. That one is on, is that also on Apple TV Plus? I don't remember, but that one's really good. It's like King Kong Godzilla universe. What else did we watch? Mm. The new True Detective, Night Country. Very good. Um, there are two other seasons out of True Detective. I would recommend watching those first. Not that you couldn't start Night Country without, like you, you'll be totally fine. It's not like you'll be lost. It's its own little story, but there are nuggets from other seasons sprinkled into this one. And apparently this season is was really inspired by 
The Thing, the movie The Thing. Um, there are two. So there's the thing that came out in like 19... When did the first thing come out? We just watched it the other night. 1982. The 1982 is uh, obviously you guys have to, if you watch it, you have to know like the CGI, the graphics are not going to be great, but it, you know, it's good for what it is. There are very, there are some moments where I'm just like, oh my God, that's so bad. But the concept is really good. And then they came out with a prequel of that in 2011, also called The Thing. Um, that one, in my opinion, was a lot better than the first. Just in terms of, I would say, the storyline and obviously the special effects. So much better than the first one. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of inspiration that came from The Thing for Night Country. And Night Country takes place in Alaska and yeah it's just really really fascinating and it has very like spooky sort of paranormal elements to it even though it's like a true detective series you know so I am really enjoying that one it kind of sucks that it's coming out week by week now or it sucks that I'm watching it in real time come out week by week and I can't just like binge it because every time the episode ends I'm like no I have to know what happens. How many do I have left? I feel like I've been potting forever. This isn't even very interesting in terms of the repotting. I'm doing the same thing over and over and over again. So really you're just like listening to me talk. Oh my gosh. Dealing with FOMO on plant trends. I don't know if it's like, I'm just so, what's the word? I don't know if it's because I'm more careful with my money now or I'm in a place where I'm seeing results from better spending and better saving or more aggressive saving my impulses to buy expensive plants it just is not there anymore no matter how much I want it yeah I just I feel like I've been collecting long enough now that I see how the trends go and I see how quickly, I know that it might not seem fast, like two years might not seem fast, but it kind of is fast for something to go from like being $10,000 for a plant to like being $50 or $100. Like take the Spiritus for example, like I remember in 2020 seeing cuttings of plants go for like five, six, seven thousand $7,000 and now you know you can buy a whole plant for like less than for like a couple hundred or you can find a cutting for for really cheap too like i got mine from north shore tropicals for i think she was selling them for 150 for like a juvenile sized plant that jump is insane and so i've just yeah i've kind of observed the market long enough to know now that i I can be patient and I can wait because it feels so much better to acquire a wishlist plant at the prices that actually work with your budget than to splurge and have that high of like, ooh, now I have it, not many people have it. I just don't, I don't know, I just don't get that urge anymore, um, which is really, really nice. I guess my only advice would be to be patient because the more a plant is trending, the more people are going to be buying it. And when they buy it at high prices, they are more than likely going to be propagating and selling plants. And the more that plant is cut, sold, cut, sold, cut, sold, there's just gonna be way more on the market and eventually the price is gonna come down. So just be patient and just know that even if you don't have the trendiest, coolest, coolest plants right now. You're gonna live. Um, I recommend going into your collection and just pampering some of the ones that maybe you haven't touched in a while, and just appreciating the ones that you do have. Because sometimes, like I'll have a plant in my house for so long, and it just kind of becomes like whatever but then i'll like repot it and i'll put like a pole or like i'll put it into a new vessel and then i'll move it into a different location in the house and then i just have this like newfound appreciation for it so yeah that's my only advice 
I think either, you know, it's natural that you're going to feel FOMO at some point. Because there's a lot of plants that I wish I had but didn't. But the desire for me to like seek it out and pay the prices that they are for these super cool trendy plants right now. It doesn't even like cross my mind to to try and like actually acquire it. Learning to appreciate a plant from afar is a special skill you have to learn, but it's worth it. Once you do kind of get the hang of it, just be like, I don't need it right now, but I can look at pictures and just that a feeling of like, maybe in the future I'll own it is like enough of excitement for me. It's like something to look forward to. Um, Valentine's Day is soon, maybe some worse date stories. Luckily, I have never been the type to celebrate Valentine's Day, even with Vince. So historically, like if I was dating a guy and he wanted to do something for Valentine's Day, I would be like, no, I don't like this holiday. Or if I was single and like a guy wanted to hang out on Valentine's Day, I don't, I already know like what he's expecting. So I would just not, I'm just not a Valentine's Day person. Um, so yeah, no cringe horror, Valentine's Day horror, horror stories, but maybe, maybe she's asking just horror stories in general for dates. Oh God, I have so many of those. Actually, that could be its own, that could be its own repot and chat are my like stories from when I was dating. Oh my gosh. I always tell Vince, I'm like, thank goodness we are married and locked down because I could not survive the dating world now, especially with the apps and stuff. Oh my God, Archie, geez Louise. He's so small. He's like not even a foot long yet, but like the pain he can inflict in there sometimes or the discomfort, it's crazy. He's not even a pound yet. He's already like a wild child. I'm gonna save that for its own repot and chat because that could be really fun. Fun for you, traumatizing for me. Why is this guy here? You're, you're too small. In the trash you go. I have two, three. I have three more. <gasps> Woo, we're getting close. How long have I been recording for? Oh gosh. Weird things slash people you and Jing have seen in your time managing groups. This is, this is a collab I have been wanting to do with Jing. And now that she's leaving soon for China, she's gonna be in China for like a month. Jing, we need to collab. Um, here's the thing. I am one of the moderators in Jing's Facebook group. I would say the biggest local group here. I think there's like almost 10,000 people now in the group. Whereas when I first joined, there was like 600 people. So it's a massive group now. And over the years, cause I started being a mod, I think in 2020 and we have seen it all. We have heard it all. We have been in every kind of drama under the sun. We have been threatened, <laughs> we've been cussed out, we've been targeted, like we have witnessed it all. We've just, it's been a wild freaking ride. Oh, I forgot to inoculate. Yeah, it's been a wild journey and we have so many stories we could tell, so many. Um, and lots of things that happen behind the scenes that aren't even like, you know, public knowledge. Like we just, it's all in here, all the secrets we keep. I would love to talk about them because some are like really wild, but I feel sort of this obligation to privacy, even though I we obviously, if we talked about it, we wouldn't disclose names or anything. But yeah, it's just, I, I, I feel a little bit weird about like talking about something that happened in private so publicly. So I think if we did do this, we would only, bring up stories that were very public, like that happened in a public post or that we dealt with very publicly, but not some of the things that we've handled behind the scenes, but some of those are like the best stories, unfortunately. But I'm just like, I don't know. I just expect that like in the Facebook groups I'm in, if there's something that happens in the group that's private and dealt with privately, that they would maintain that privacy you know, and not like go around and be like, okay, so this is what happened one time. Even though they don't mention me by name, I don't know, it just seems like kind of disrespectful. 
So I'll have to talk about it. I do think we have to go about it very, very... I grabbed just enough cups. I love when that happens. I think we have to go about it very carefully, but I do think it could be an interesting thing to talk about. Um, I'm gonna answer a few more because I'm almost done here. How has your perspective on buying slash selling plants changed since working at the plant shop? So if you guys don't know, I work one to two days a week at the North Shore Tropicals at Lauren's shop. How has my perspective changed on buying or selling? Well, I'm definitely enjoying selling more. It's a lot easier for me to sell my plants if I need to. I guess with buying, I because Lauren pretty much has access to every plant that I could ever want, essentially, I guess I'm just not really scouring buy sell trade groups anymore because I know that like if there's a plant that I want, I can probably get it through Lauren or she can find out where to get it or something. But again, I'm not really like buying all that much right now. I will say, okay, that um, there was a point where maybe I thought about opening a plant shop. Like there was a, a an opening, a space here uh, where I live that could have definitely operated as a plant shop. And I, I don't know, I thought about it. I really did. But after seeing what Lauren goes through in terms of taking care of the volume that she's taking care of, dealing with imports, how much loss she incurs running this business, dealing with customers who sometimes can be a nightmare, um, dealing with public reviews before they can even talk to you about it. Like the things she has to deal with, I think it would bring me a lot of anxiety. I do have a lot of respect for what she does. And I think, um, I don't know, I don't wanna say this wrong, but some people are just like, oh, like why would I buy a plant at this price point if I could just import it myself? But I think a lot of people aren't, they don't see the behind the scenes of how hard it is to actually run a profitable plant shop that has overhead, that's not just operating from home. It's a lot, it's a lot, it's a lot of money, guys. She's not just like raking it in. Trust me, there's a lot of money going out. There's a lot of expenses. Um, she has employees, like it's a lot. And I just, I don't know if I could handle it. I'm not even joking. The stress that she goes through with plants um, and really not being able to take time off without making sure things are handled. So like with my business, the nature of my business, I wanted a business where I could just leave if I needed to. I wanted a business where I don't have to like be there every single day. I could just go on vacation and leave for as long as I want and the business would be fine. She doesn't have that luxury. If she wants to do anything, if she's sick, if her kid is sick, she has to figure out what's gonna happen because plants need to be watered, shipments are coming in, things need to be cleared, orders have to go out. Like, it's just constantly moving, this machine. And if you don't have a good handle on it, it can go bad really fast. Not to mention, you have all these plants in the volume that you do. What if you have a major thrips outbreak or a spider mite outbreak? It's so much stress, it's so much stress. And so I've received plants from plant shops, like buying online or even in person that have had pests on it. And I, I really find it sad when people are so quick to be like shaming them online or like being so open about their issue before they even go to that shop and tell them what the issue is. I've had people say that my mentality is wrong in this front, but I just feel like if you're buying plants, you should have that expectation that there could be pests. I'm not saying it's okay, but I'm saying that if you are buying a live plant, you just have to expect, you just have to expect that that might happen. And I think everyone who buys a plant has the obligation of inspecting it when they first get it keeping it isolated for a while before introducing it to the rest of your collection. And if you do find pests, it's not it's not the end of the world. I don't think that you need to like immediately start a war or leave a bad review for that shop. I think you should like show them some grace and reach out to them 
privately and just be upfront about what you want. Tell them like what you expect after getting this pest and see if they'll work with you. Um, I don't think that you should just assume that they're gonna just ignore you. They're gonna be like, well, too bad or know that, you know, I didn't give that to you. I'm sure a lot of the times or a good majority of the times plant shops who actually care about their plants and care about their customers will try and make things right if they can um, and within reason. So anyway, all that to say, I just feel I just feel like I'm not cut out for that kind of life. Um, but I certainly respect people who do, people like Lauren and you know, I know other plant shop owners and it's a lot, it's a lot of work, it's a lot of pressure, a lot of things can go wrong. I'm not super risk averse, I'm just kind of somewhere in the middle between safe and taking like a full blown risk. I'm like, I just hover in the middle and I do like stability and I do like structure and kind of knowing that a paycheck is gonna come in every so often so yeah anyway that that's just my thoughts on that so i hope that made sense anywho i say anywho a lot don't i um <laughs> the seedlings are repotted i don't know where they're gonna go i think i might try and put them here or i might have to at the bottom here i have another shelf where i keep substrates I think I'm going to remove them, try and shove them somewhere in my tent, or not my tent, in my closet and do like a seedling thing down here because the shelves are a bit lower um, and I think they'll do pretty okay. You know, they are now transitioning out of a dome, so I'm hoping that the humidity is going to be okay, but I don't want to sell any larger plants that need to be in like a hundred percent humidity like i do want to acclimate them down a bit before they go out to their new homes and that will be the plan so i hope you guys enjoyed this seedling repot and kind of seeing some of the variation in a seed batch um, i hope it was enough to prove to you that there are weak seeds and maybe have you think about some of the seeds that you have where maybe they're not doing very well and your friends are doing your friend's seeds are doing good and you're wondering if it's a you thing, it really might not be. It might just be the seed you got. So, um, anywho, anywho, say it again, Sherman. Um, I'm, I'm making so many noises here. I don't, I need to just, I have no control over my body. Okay, I'm gonna go. I almost said anywho again. I'm gonna go. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. Um, don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you liked it. If you have any repot and chat topics for me, um, in the future, please let me know. I do think I'm gonna do the dating one. Um, I'm just gonna have to go back in the archive and see what I've got, but yeah, give it a thumbs up if you like it and I will see you in the next one.